Okay. okay. Now. Hi everyone, it's Veronica Bartolini with Unchained Hearts on Soma Fusion, Mind, Body, and Soul with my producer, Katie Camara. And I have a very special guest. Her name is Lindsay Fireball. And I'm excited to hear all about her because she's a badass MMA fighter. And here we go. Lindsay, welcome to the show. How are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing Good great. You. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm in another place right now, as you can tell, the orange wall. Yeah. Is but, that uh, <laughs> not your, just a random place or like your new place? No, it's, uh, I, I'm i staying at a, right now at a hotel with my uh, divine counterpart because we were looking for a place to live, yeah. but um, they, at the two, two, two cities we went to, uh, there's waiting lists and you know, he was telling me that it's because of the whole pandemic thingy and people are scared from California moving left and right. And then Katie was saying that some people are crossing the border to come this way. And yeah. um, this is just nuts, you know, people are afraid and I don't know. Yeah, it's it's been like that for a while now, eh? Like it's been pretty crazy, like the last, but I, I mean, it's been, been more than a year now. Yeah, but I had no idea. Like, I mean, I had heard People say, oh, yeah, people like I live in right now. Well, my apartment's in Tucson, but um, yeah. it's like, you know, I had heard people say, yeah, people are moving from California. But I thought it wasn't that bad until I came over here to look for places and everything is on waiting lists. Like I said, everything, is, it seems to the houses are being bought by investors and yeah. there's just so many people. Um, but anyway, um, so. Lindsay, how did we meet? <laughs> oh gosh, you know what? Um, it was really random, wasn't it? You you yeah. added me on Facebook, and then it was weird because it was like I know this girl, and I had never met you before, and like you know, we just started talking, and it was like you know, kind of like someone that you've known for years. <laughs> so you know, I figured, well, my my biggest guess was probably we've met each other before. Um, you know probably in the programs even you know like uh it just you seem so familiar it was uh yeah so and i thought you know like and on a soul level too like i kind of you know resonated with you um i know there's a lot of people that are in like the different programs and stuff but like one of the things that i always found was like you know there's obviously different sections and people are used for different things but i, I do find that like some people they're a little bit more spiritual than you know other groups and um you know and you seemed like you know you have that like essence to you as well you know you kind of like kick ass and do all that <laughs> stuff but at the same time you know what I mean <laughs> you've got your sage out and you know you've got your you know, you kind of resonate with every everything at a soul level too so um yeah I know uh, yeah and I, I you know that resonates with me because you know I you know growing up basically always like as a very spiritual person since I've been a little child you know um I don't have like a religion per se or something like that although I've probably read the more of the bible than you know most Christians or Christians you know like I probably know it better than they do but I read all the you know all the books because a lot of them have things that you can take out of them and you know I like most people who have Mexican and their family they probably have been brought up a little bit with some Catholic Catholic background or whatnot right um but yeah so not to ramble but I find that that um yeah I always had that was a was a big um thing for me and, and one of the things I kind of or I didn't connect when I first started having like memories kind of come up when I kind of realized you know like obviously I, like I had a really good mind wipe so I couldn't really connect a lot of stuff but I thought to myself well I'm not really like those people you know like some of the super soldiers they were very they remind me of like the military and I had a lot of beef with the military which I didn't really start to understand until more recently when I realized that I had actually probably um, been in with them like in with Solar Warden like a secret division of Solar Warden and, right you know when I was just a kid I was already mad at how they did things you know um I felt like they weren't evolving. They were kind of like just take things and do everything. They're very 3D. I guess that's <laughs> the, the word I'm looking for. They're very 3D. They're so, very what? Um, 
like th like three D oriented, you know? Like, oh, really, 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 yeah, yeah. Like even if they have look at technology and stuff, um, you know, there's a lot of technologies, but there's even more advanced technologies when you get at the soul level. When you kind of like elevate to a higher consciousness, there's even more advanced technologies that can be in our DNA, and you know, we carry it with us from lifetime to lifetime. But yes, I found that. You know, so you've probably found the same. Some of them don't necessarily have, um, you know, they, they just see everything as very like, <laughs> um, like this is technology the stuff that you can build or, you know, manipulate here. But um, they don't understand that if you wanted to take it to the next level, like the reason why they're still stuck um, and, and the way we, the reason why we have so many problems like we do is because they're still uh, consciously kind of stuck in that paradigm true yeah i i do agree with you about having our um abilities in our dna uh our technology um we're able to morph things in and out i you know i it's weird because i may not understand like the basic math but i totally can warp time and i'm also a time traveler as, as i think you know and i you know you can manipulate the timelines you can manipulate your future um the outcome manifestation is part of the quantum physics, I believe, and our abilities as well. Um, I, I find that some people, it's really hard for them to um, kind of go with the flow of their abilities. It's, it's um, they want things a certain done a certain way. And, you know, in the beginning, I was like, okay, when I had my awakening, it's like, Oh my gosh like i've always been psychic i've always had i've always been a clear channel i've always had all of the uh because some of us do come with all of the abilities and some of us have been in all the programs all of them yeah. i've been a solar warden you know not and you name it crystal gates yeah. um, the hulk program so they use us because we're so way i can't even say the word evolved it's um we we morph, we, we, we can change things, you know? And, um, and of course the spiritual side that you, that you see that, that you also have is because we want the, the best outcome for humanity. You know, we're tired of the children being taken even though they used us as children and older yeah. to take the children, right? to the bases, to the different planets, off planet, on planet, whatever. And then all along, I was like, oh, I'm rescuing children. Yeah, right, they're using you, right? Mm -hmm. To put them back. And this is information that I agree with with my divine counterpart, whenever he's ready to, you know, to, to make another video, we will. But um, it, it, he explained it in that form. He says, well, how do you know that they're not using us to put the children back into these programs, you know? Yeah. And because I brought up this point where I don't know uh, if you're familiar with uh, Miles Johnson basis. Um, he talks yeah. to this guy, I forget his name, but I'll remember hopefully. Um, but this guy, he mentioned, uh, he says, well, these people talking about saving the children all these years, well, how many children are there? And the people don't understand. I didn't like Tim Refat, that's what he said. Tim Refat said, well, how do you know it's not a conspiracy theory? How, how, how many children are, are going missing? And, and, and I just wanted to like reach out to him and say, yo, like there's a lot of kids that are missing and they're, and they're being made just like they made our altars and, and cloned our bodies. And we have so many um, other uh, I, I, sleeves, we'll say, right? Through just yeah. our DNA. And I'm still stuck in, my body's still stuck under Antarctica. It's in a then pretty much I'm, I'm a fish in a fish tank, right? I'm half dragon, half, you know, dolphin, and I'm stuck there and they're still using me. And some people are hooked up on the chairs in the ships. And I want to go back to my ship and my divine counterpart and my soul family. I, I don't want to be here, but somehow I got stuck and I'm here to help everyone as much as I can to, um, to break free from their programming in a way like, because I mean, I'm sure we try and break away from all the programming, but it's like, I'm here to, to, to help them help themselves to find out what is their truth. Um, 
and uh, fight the good fight at the end because we're all here. I mean, super soldiers, I'm going to talk for most super soldiers. We're here to win the good fight. We're not here to uh, hide. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, I totally get that. I mean, that's, I think, you know, there's been a few times where, you know, you get really frustrated with all those things, you know, we have to go through. And, um, but then I realized, okay, you know, obviously, like, I'm here to help people, right? Like, you know, you, you kind of want to be like, you know, I'm kind of fed up with all this, you know, like BS, right? You know, I'm done with this. But yeah, you know, you, the big thing is you don't want to leave this as like a, a slave planet or, you know, a slave right. system, right? You want people to be like liberated. Um, and the most hard part about it is that a lot of people, you know, act like they don't want to be free you know like you're trying to wake them up and, and help them get out of it and then they just keep going back you know to their their captors you know like back to the you know the, the matrix sort of system right so that's that's frustrating too you know like <laughs> you want to help people but yeah well you mentioned the bible and i know the bible a lot because you know since I was a kid as well, I was Catholic and then Christian. And so you just mm -hmm. mentioned, you know, how, first of all, you know, I'm learning to not throw pearls at the pigs, like they say, quote unquote. And I don't like to use that word, the terminology, because it is a trigger word in the programs. It means something. Yeah. But then, like you said, like it, it also says, you know, they go, they revert back to their vomit, right? Mm -hmm. And it, I don't like that word either, but it's like, how, <laughs> how else can you describe their comfort? They don't want to get out of their comfort. You know, yeah. um, they'll they'll have the government give them this and this and that or different. They're they're just they're afraid, and I do understand some of them are afraid, mm -hmm. but that's why we're we're here to wake up the the true warriors. I I, I mean, no no offense, but you know, I'm always asking people, well, who are you? Are you a warrior? Or are you just going to be a sheep, just yeah. following orders? Yeah. And so, Lindsay, how did you uh, have your awakening, by the way? Um, I guess it depends what awakening. Um, so, like, since, since I've been a kid, um, I've been kind of, I came in really connected with everything. Um, and I guess another reason why I probably really got taken at a young age, um, because I was really aware and I was, you know, really in touch with everything. Um, and I, I feel like, you know, it was almost like, I went back to sleep for a couple of years. I came like, you know, more of a normal kid, like for about maybe, yeah, a couple of years. And then um, when I was like, you know, I was 12, I was getting in a lot of trouble because, you know, like I, my parents had gotten divorced. I was, you know, drinking and smoking and <laughs> doing like <Yeah>. everything, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then all of a sudden one day I'm like, you know, at the end of that, I was just kind of like, you know what? Like, there's so much more to life, like, and all of a sudden I realized, you know, like the purpose of life is to become enlightened, you know, and all of a sudden, so I started doing Qigong and stuff when I was um, 12, 13 years old, I began doing meditation, Qigong, eventually I moved um, to my dad's who lived in the forest, and, um, you know, I was doing like hours every day in between my schoolwork, I did some homeschooling so I could just meditate and be in the forest all day, and then I really, yeah, like my psychic energies and everything really, really like came out and my abilities and then um you know and then there were some visitations and you know that kind of freaked me out like um what kind of the time um you know I'm not even to this day I'm not totally I mean I, I felt like they were like you know something like ETs um you know, we had like something land in the forest one day, like it lit up the whole sky. And then, you know, they were knocking at the windows, like, you know, and then just to, almost to scare me. But then there was also some orbs and UFOs that had flown in over top that didn't make a sound. They're just like giant, you know, and they're just there and they just speed off. And um, and then there was one other time when something had crashed outside my house and something had walked around. You could actually hear it talking. And I don't know what it was saying, but it, it was like, like the voice was like, hey, 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 you know, in some weird language, <laughs> you know, what I mean? you could actually hear it walk all the way around the house on the gravel because the gravel makes sound when you're walking and, you know, and, and then, and then there was like some, you know, I was getting a lot of really positive. I could always hear these sounds and tones every night, but then one night I heard, you know, a dark voice, you know, and I try to 
you know, keep it out so I didn't hear it. And then it was like, oh, don't worry, you're going to come to me. And I remember being so frightened because, you know, I just thought, oh, no, like, you know, I'm not ever going to turn to like become kind of like the Star Wars movie, right? I don't want to ever turn to the dark side, right? Um, I had, I'd received a lot of warnings and stuff, um, you know, from the, the Qigong teacher, I had his teacher kind of um, really passed on a lot of that stuff. So, um, but he, my Qigong teacher ended up becoming kind of like a dark magician and became really evil. And then I don't, I think his soul left his body because he, he had greed and he had all the things that you're supposed to purge out of you while you're advancing and he didn't. So I guess he was able to make contact with those beings. And then he, um, he started doing that thing where, you know, you call souls or into your body. And yeah, one day when I looked at him, it just wasn't him anymore. So that was pretty freaky. And then, yeah, so on and off after that, um, I had, you know, like I always had like, I kind of phases where I go up and down and um I guess as far as like the programs go though um you know I I didn't have I had no memories of like I guess my mind was wiped really well because I had no memories of anything like that but I did have the regular everyday memories of you know these people that came to my school when I was um about six years old or so they were called the challenge program and they were basically there to identify <laughs> geniuses, right? And I had a really a high IQ, like over 165 or whatever. And, and um, you know, and I remember thinking, oh, I wanna be in this program, right? Cause you know, so I remember them coming in and I did all the tests and I didn't realize actually until last year, believe it or not. But one of the tests, I always thought it was an intelligence thing but they put like a board like in front of you where you can't see on the other side and they would have like objects. And I would have to guess what was on the other side of the wall. So um, obviously that's not, that's like an ESP test, right? And, um, you know, I never connected the dots at the time. And um, yeah, so, so stuff like that, um, you know, and my brother also got chosen. The weird thing was I didn't know I actually got picked for that program, um, but my brother also got picked. And my dad didn't tell me till like years later because he said that basically he, he already thought maybe I wouldn't fit in. So I was really good at sports. So he kind of pushed that because he didn't want me to be this like nerd for rocket science with like no friends, a little beaker <laughs> and glasses, right? So it's like, oh, she's good at sports. She does sports. But um, yeah, my parents have no memory of my brother being um, in the program, which was weird because um, he, you know, he, he also, uh, remembers his first day like he came for one day to that program and then I was waiting in the car for him and we both remember that and then um yeah and then the other really weird things that stood out that made me um wonder about uh the programs and stuff was um at the airports like um I went to school in the states for for university and um so I did travel back and forth a lot and um I think when I first started getting stopped, I was probably about maybe 18 years old. And every single time I ever would go across into the United States, I could go into other countries, it wouldn't matter. But every time I crossed into the United States, I'd always get basically red flagged and I'd get taken out to a separate, you know, room. And then, and then the people who took me from customs, they would leave. So it wasn't them interrogating me. It would be some new people that would come in and, um, yeah, they would ask me questions, um, like they'd say, you know, just weird questions, like questions that had nothing to do, like I had no criminal record or anything, but they'd ask me, you know, questions about like, I don't know, like about my life <laughs> and about my school and, you know, and, um, and, and I knew I was actually on a red flag list because the first, first or second time they did that I, I was actually waiting they basically took me somewhere and they said okay we're going to be right back just wait here and they put me in a room with like I think it was like Chinese and a bunch of other countries they were nobody spoke English in the room and um you know people were crying and I thought oh my god like you know like I don't know why I'm here right and then this guy was walking by and um and I remember he was a African-American man and I guess because he was African-American, he thought maybe like I had been somehow maybe picked on <laughs> because he goes, what are you doing? He goes, why are you here? And then he, he takes me out and then he, he tries to figure out what's going on. 
And, um, you know, and he looks, he goes, you know, you're on a red flag list, right? And I was like, oh, no, I didn't know. And he, and he turns the screen towards me so I could see it. And, you know, and there was like the whole screen was all writing about me. I thought, oh my God, like, you know what I mean? Like, I wonder what they're saying. He goes, yeah, I don't know why it says right here, you're not a criminal. And um, he goes, you know, I, I don't know why they're picking on you. So he just assumed, you know, goes, I've been through stuff in my life. And so I'm just going to erase it. And hopefully he goes, I don't know if it's on a bigger system than ours, but at least if it's on the main system, like they're like a system at the airport, at least it will erase it. He goes, but I can't promise it'll be erased. So, and sure enough, many, many years would go by many, many times. Um, I get stopped and, you know, and ask questions like, like, um, you know, why I was a bad student, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, well, what are you talking about? And they're like, yeah, why were you a bad student, Lindsay? And I'm like, I wasn't a bad student. And then, you know, just weird, weird things. But it basically, it almost seemed like they they were hoping that they were trying to see if I could remember anything. That's what it seemed like, because I would get so confused. And when I finally get so flustered, because I don't know why I'm in this room, I don't know why I'm getting asked questions about, you know, like my life from school. And then they finally, I remember this one time they looked at me and they're like, you don't really know why you're here, do you? And <laughs> I was like, no. And they're like, okay, yeah, you're free to go then. So yeah, so they, you know, let me go. And you um, know what it sounds like, Lindsay? They were they were looking for some altars, girl. Yeah. Yeah. They were yeah, looking I never, if you had altars, like if they can get some of your altars out by pissing you off. Because they, I understand totally. They, they try and do that when I have to go through the airport. And of course, I end up messing up their machine, you know, oh, yeah. their x-ray machine. And then they still have to, you know, search me and then, oh, you give me your hands. And I'm like, why are you, why are you putting that stuff on me on my hands? Oh, yeah. for explosives. I'm like, haha, really? And then one day I said, here's a grenade. And I'm like, I'm just kidding, just kidding, you know? And, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> they just looked at me like, okay. Oh, that's can, funny. But I was I was talking to some some people like some of my SSP family and they're like um, I don't know if it was Penny or who told me um, it's because it has to deal with um, what is inside so like whether it's the black glue that they use the adrenochrome uh, LSD uh, I know that they used a lot of uh, they they also use um, what is that thing that they use to, to make your muscles in augment? Oh, like a muscle, um, not a relaxant, augment. No, not, like not a relaxer, not a relaxer, but a steroid. Because oh, steroid, okay. Yeah, when I was going through the, before I, I, I went to the police academy, I had to go through three polygraphs and uh, three psychological tests of 500 questions each, you know, and, and the reason why I had to go back to do three for one of the agencies was because they said that supposedly in my hair, they had found a steroid with the hair um, testing. I'm like, I've never used steroids in my whole life. And this is when I was like 34 that I went through the police academy or 35. And years later, it wasn't until just recently that I figured out that it was, that it's because it just stays in your DNA and your system. So, um, I feel that we have, I know, okay, that we have the technology to track us, you know, when we're born, they chip us in the back, right? Um, mm -hmm. I would like to hear, we were having that conversation uh, last week, I believe, about nanotechnology. I am really familiar with that, and so are you, and I found it very exciting that somebody else knows what the heck they're talking about. So we're not going to say the thing, we're going to say the thing uh -huh. that runs. With Maxine, okay, what um, I know it's gonna, you know, it's used for transhumanism, it's used for tracking, it's used to, um, it, it's like it, it has the um, metals, aluminum, whatever, other than the other, um, we'll say things, the tracking devices that they put in there. Yeah. It's like, it's like if somebody asked me, um, why is it that people hallucinate? Because this, this gentleman, you know, he was, he's an ex um, heroin addict and he's like, well, you know, I think I, I don't understand why we have hallucinations when I had hallucinations, he said. 
And I said, well, because there's nanotechnology in, there's metals, there's nanotechnology in the heroin itself or the drugs. And so when they beam down the energy weapons, even just by having the 5G towers or your phone on, they can send mm -hmm. messages that way through the Wi-Fi, you know, mm -hmm. uh, or the drones are watching you and they can, right, do the, the logarithm to make you see certain things or, 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 or you will, you know, see certain things um, just because it's in your body already. And, and so he said, oh, that makes sense. At night, I would turn off my phone and, and the Wi-Fi, he said, and then I feel better. And I'm like, okay, it's because it's like kind of like um, the tracking device that is very simple that I talked about. I think the last video was like, if you have, if you have a tag on your shirt, right, mm -hmm. um, that you can unsew it and then open it and you'll see like either red, green, or a color code. And that's yeah. an antenna to track people. And now they're just engraving it in, in like, you know, especially yeah. sports or attire or military attire. But um, what, uh, what would you like to say about all that? Oh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a real opening up a real can of worms, right? Because I mean, I mean, yeah, they've had this technology for quite a while. And um, the more you look into it, like a lot of the stuff was actually kind of, I think, out on the surface, right? Like, um, I actually heard a really interesting thing the other day. Um, it was kind of similar to what you're saying, but it was basically like with the, 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 the a lot of the, like, I guess the nano materials, they're not nanobots, like say when they spray like the skies with chemtrails or whatever, they're not just like, already made nanobits they're just like you know the materials and then they get into your system and then when they get into your um your stomach acid or whatever it kind of changes them and they form into the little nanobots right and then using those nanobots inside your body they get all your information all your biometrics um and then they make they so that they can make a simulated version of you and, and put it in a simulated reality so they kind of get an idea of you know what you're gonna do and you know what you're you know like in that little world and then they try to reverse it where like all of a sudden they've got to try to get that thing to start to control you where they kind of yeah um flip it the yeah, other real, way real quick have you seen that movie gamer you know um so when they create you know that they're trying to create our other self uh through the we'll say the black mirror or through our cell phones as well um it's mm -hmm. like and then we're being pawned off and we're playing these video games, quote unquote, right? Yeah. Here, and people are betting on us to see, hey, I wonder if she or he can, you know, save their family or save the planet, or you know, I wonder how much, um, how much more we can augment her or whatever. But see, it's not a video game; it's reality for us here. It's just that in that world. They can they can go ahead and um, pretend to be you, and try mm -hmm. and alter your reality here. So yeah, totally, yeah, yeah. But go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 that's that's you know that's totally what basically what was being said. You know, uh, the guy that was talking about it was somebody that had worked on hard for a long time. Um, but you know, the really interesting thing he was talking about borax. I don't know if you've heard much about. You know, um, everyone else thinks it's, you know, laundry, right? Like laundry detergent, which is really good to get the, you know, stains out. But, um, you know, borax is um, sodium tetraborate. So it's sodium, boron, water, and oxygen. That's all that is. Like, you know, you get the mule 20 or whatever. That's all that's actually in it. It's all natural. Um, and it's super, super alkaline. So he was saying it was, it was actually the perfect um, nano um, filament inhibitor. You know, so it kind of stops the things from sticking together and making them, you know, becoming nanobots or whatever. So, um, you know, it's it's a good, I guess, remedy when you're breathing in, you know, all this nanotech, like, <laughs> you know, from the skies and whatever, right? So, yeah, it was, um, and it's like super, super alkaline. It kills candida, um, you know, and you don't need a lot of it. You just Put like a tiny bit, I guess, you know, like you can use like just like a little pinch in a liter of water, right? And um, so I thought, you know, that was that was really interesting. Um, and one of the other things, actually, I was going to tell you because I, I saw something really cool today. 
Um, I don't know if I can say it or whatever. I don't know if it's bad here. Can you see the word? That word? Can, I, can we say that word? Here, here I'll, I'll make it in half because I feel like I'm showing it up. Okay. <laughs> that. that top. Okay. Yes, go ahead and say it. Yeah, we can. Okay, so I noticed that, so in Canada, where I am, um, this ivermectin is like super, super uh, censored. Um, we got actually a prescription for it from our doctor friend. And um, it's interesting because my partner went in to go get it. And um, while he was in, I guess, at, with the prescription in the pharmacy, a black helicopter flew right over top. And I was like, oh my God, like, wonder whether, like, what's the big deal? It's just like, oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a little deal where we're trying to get, right? We thought maybe it'd be a good idea given all the stuff going on. And um, yeah, but I, you know, I, in Canada, you can't, even with the doctor's prescription uh, for the first time ever, they, they won't even let, like not one pharmacist um, in the pharmacy will give it to you and they won't order it in for you. And the, one of the pharmacists actually said, oh, I want to call your doctor and ask him, you know, why, why he wrote you this. And I was like, okay, this is a doctor. He can like do whatever he wants. Like, this is yeah. not, you know what I mean? So it's just weird. And I realized that all the pharmacies, after talking to a bunch of people, especially across my province, all the pharmacies, have, it's all the same across the board. You cannot get it even with prescription. Um, you know, I, I got the horse, you know, if you have horses, <laughs> they, they, it's the same one. In the, but um, I, what I found was really cool today was there was a thing from DARPA about DARPA, the hydrogel. And yes. they were showing it. Yeah, I think it was either Russia or Czechoslovakia. Um, but basically they had um, with the hydrogel, they showed it like, you know, like how it makes all those like weird lines and everything. And then they put ivermectin on it in the second picture and it dissolved all of the hydrofilm or the hydro gel, sorry. Yeah, so it dissolved the hydro gel. And then when I saw that, I was like, oh my God. I'm like, well, this makes even more sense because it kills parasites, which I, I do think is one of the problems of what's going on yes. with these people who have these injections. But there's obviously a nanotechnology problem as well and maybe a couple other things. And that kind of what could have possibly eliminate what's, you know what I mean? So no wonder why they went like above and beyond to try to stop a parasite dewormer. Um, yeah, I don't know if you've heard anything about that, but I was pretty mind blown when I saw those pictures. I thought, oh my God. So if that's true, that would make more sense now why they put such an effort. Um, but yes. yeah, Canada's, Canada's pretty bad um, right now for all the stuff, like, I don't know. Might be one of the worst places. That's what <laughs> I heard. There. Yeah, that's yeah. What I heard. Yeah, and I never thought I would say that because you know I've been all over the world. I've lived in the states, um, but I never thought the day would come where Canada was really like just becoming hardcore like communist and just hardcore like I don't know if they're trying to kill a lot of the people here or. You know, like a lot of people say that Canada is like the experimental grounds for a lot of things. Um, but yeah, like it's it's tough. <laughs> um, to well, I this. do agree. Yeah, I do agree uh, about the hydrogel. I do agree about how they uh, want to introduce that parasite through the mRNA. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the ways that they do it is uh, with the vaccines or whatever you want to call them, they are here to infiltrate uh, with, along with H1N1, the, um, the pulmonary breathing, you know, lung system to um, apparently this parasite grows when it doesn't have that much oxygen, <laughs> you know, oh, and um, yeah, but yeah, Canada is pretty bad. Um, like we were talking about earlier, a lot of people are fleeing California. Um, I just feel like that they're clearing the north part, you know, north, like, you know, here's the United States map, and then here's the, the border, right, Canada and whatever. And mm -hmm. so they're coming down, down, down and out. Um, they're fleeing that um, it could be where the first FEMA FEMA camps are. Um, if not, well, I know that there's some here in the US too. Now, as far as being the experimental ground, yes, but, but however, here in the United States as well, if you look mm -hmm. at um, their commercials here in the US, you know, it seems like every 
three, third commercial or whatever. It's like, buy your life insurance now. <laughs> like they put in that yeah. fear of, si no compras aseguranza, you know, quien te va a enterrar? Who's going to, you know, bury you or, or whatever if you, <laughs> if you don't have your, your life insurance, you know, uh, invest in your future stocks and bonds. And it's like, that doesn't even, that's just matrix world stuff. Um, you know, um, just changing yourself all the time. Um, plastic surgery, what else? The food, every mm -hmm. other commercial is not all the commercials that I've seen. Like I always have to like skip them on YouTube or even the TV. Um, that's why I don't like really watching TV is because you know, yeah. the food and the, the, there's nanites in there as well. There's the GMOs that work with the nanites. It's so bad. It expands mm -hmm. the, the, the digestive system and, 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 and it gets into the muscles, all that crap, the parasites. Um, you know, and, and I'm very grateful that I did discover the probiotics. Um, they're like, I don't know how many billion, whatever enzymes it has. I, I had, I started real quick. I started with uh, menopause last July. I thought I was going crazy. I'm like, what am I going to do? And a friend of mine, SSP also, he said, try probiotics. And then of course I also got on this Amberin thing at the Costco, they sell it. Um, it doesn't have any, I, 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 I told myself, I don't want to take any estrogen. You know, I don't want to have anything that, that uh, outside of my body countering me. I want to be in control, but going back to the probiotics that I, you know, where it's like, where have you been all my life probiotics? Because yeah. it makes a difference. Um, oh, yeah. I used to do like a lot of water with apple cider vinegar or in the morning when, when, Sometimes when I wake up, I forgot to bring it this time, but um, baking soda and then water. And if you want, you can add some lemon, like picot, you know, to, to clear yeah. your, your stomach, your system before you eat anything. Um, I've changed my diet to, as you know, like um, the non-GMO organic stuff. And, and, I, and one thing that connected you and I, Lindsay, was the workouts. And I, and I, I wanted to go into, I was going to start going to MMA. Um, there's a place in Tucson I was going to start in June. Okay. Oh, cool. But I messed up my shoulder in May and then I got mm -hmm. rear-ended. So yeah. I told Penny, I said, I think they rear-ended re me on purpose. And she's like, yeah, they did. And I'm like, crap, because, you know, I was getting stronger and I was bench pressing yeah. more. But one thing that I really admired was your, your, your fighting, your, your experience. And, you know, I just like to go a little bit over there that way and see if you can tell the public how, how you became such a big fighter and, and what you, how, well, you know, just your experiences and where you fought. <laughs> um, well, um, I started martial arts when I was a kid too. Um, probably, I think twelve was my first little bit of martial arts, and then I and I I did it because I played hockey too, so I only had so much time. But I also did, um, you know, I did different martial arts like Arshima, Kali, um, a little bit of Kempo and Kung Fu, and you know, the more traditional martial arts. And then um, then I did Muay Thai after. Um, like I did, oh, I did boxing first. So I had about, about probably 10 boxing fights and, um, you know, and then I did, yeah, I, I had a couple MMA fights too. And then I had Muay Thai was like kickboxing and Muay Thai, like the stand up part of it, my specialty. Cause you know, obviously they're all combat sports, but, um, you know, Muay Thai fell in love with the most because it, it had like the aspect of like you know, like technique, power, um, at the same time, it kind of has a spiritual side and it, you know, it, it has, yeah, like there's a, the Y crew you do at the beginning. It's very graceful. Um, but the, it, it's deadly grace, you know, it's like the, the more graceful you are, the harder you hit. So, yeah. So I, I ended up, um, you know, I did that for a long time and I, I, uh, won the world professional Muay Thai Federation title for featherweight. So I lived in Thailand for like two years um, anybody who like follows like Muay Thai, you know, like, like, you know, I trained, um, with some pretty big, like one of my friends is one of the considered one pound for pound best Muay Thai fighters in the world. And he was over there. And so that was pretty cool. Um, Senchai or whatever. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, been training and fighting and, um, and the last, you know, there was some interferences, even though it's like, seems like it's a separate you know, with anything that we do in our lives, you know, there's always these things that try to like, I guess, get in the way and interfere. And, um, you know, I, I, I did get some interference where like, I guess when I 
came back to Canada for a little bit. They they decided they'd ban professional fighting where I was, which would just cause it, you know, it made it really difficult to like just get those local fights. And and then, um, you know, one of the things like, you know, like if you, I would use my my energy to kind of create situations. So I, I like to travel. So I'd be like, okay, I want to go fight in Japan. So like one week later, I'm in, I get a phone call, I'm in Japan, <laughs> you know, like, so they, they didn't like that. The fact that I was, they, they were trying to, sh- um they're trying to you know shut you down and then you know you always figure a creative way out of it and so I think after that actually interestingly enough um I did have a lot of problems you know being like a targeted individual or whatnot and um there was like a few years where I I didn't fight at all because I was dealing with like just crazy things around me and um and I just actually realized just recently that um, you know, I was talking to someone, you know, who, um, you know, he's, he's a yeah, pretty psychic person. He's a Montauk survivor as well. You know, I was in, in that <laughs> course with time travel and all that. But he, you know, um, have you ever heard of like, like the Ontarians at all? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But going yeah. Little bit. Sorry? I heard, I heard the a name, but I really don't know what it is. You can elaborate. This yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of a, you know, like, a, you know, like, I guess there's different groups, but they're kind of an eighth dimensional type of, so they, they don't interact with us a lot, I don't think. But they kind of passed a message on, you know, for me about that. They just said, you know, like, hey, you know, do you remember what happened? You know, they knew the year and the time when all this stuff just went crazy. Like, I was like, yeah, and, and they just said, well, you know, it's because you were almost free. Like you started actually getting free from the system and they literally put everything they had to basically put you back in your place. So, um, yeah, quote unquote. <laughs> yeah, yeah, quote unquote, right? Put you back. In my place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. What? So, so that comes, you know, a little bit of, you know, interference with the fight career. Um, you know, like I, I don't know if you've ever had it where people's eyes go black around yeah. you and stuff. Yeah, like so it was people like everywhere. I remember trying to run away. I got thrown in jail for a few hours, even though I didn't do anything. Just, just craziness, right? I remember just being like, "Oh my god, what is happening?" Right? But, um, well, you know. yeah, you know what it is? What's fun? What's weird, Lindsay? I don't know if you saw that post. Like, okay, I'm. I finally met my divine counterpart. And before that, there was five imposters okay and one right before like and then my I can't say his name yet so he's like yeah you <laughs> not, you almost fell for him the last timeline and he he knows that all the timelines and me I see the future okay so I see them I'm also like a time traveler but what would happen what happened is you know the matrix was so pissed off that we found each other finally mm-hmm. and I was walking outside, you know, I had told my, you know, one of, one of the people in my family, Hey, I'm moving to such and such a place with my divine counterpart. She was upset. She went for a walk and then I decided to go for a walk. And I usually just walk around the apartment complex. This time I decided to walk on the sidewalk and not even, not even three minutes later, maybe, maybe three minutes, this vehicle, you know, comes up. It was a, four-door sedan, cream color, going the opposite way that I was, um, something told me, I was on the phone with my divine counterpart and I said, you know, I better cross the street and I'm just gonna go to the restroom at the Circle K, you know, I'm gonna try and chill um, because I am still gonna do what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I, I am gonna go forward with going and moving, you know, with you as we planned for the timelines because we're here super soldiers are here here most of us are going to find our divine counterparts for to work together in a few years three or four years you know what i'm saying when shit excuse my language is really going to hit the fan right now it's nothing so this (laughs) people goes and starts shooting it was a total of 10 shots and he's like drop down and i'm like nah i'm good because i was like I ran fast enough to cross the street the other direction to get to the Circle K. And then I called, you know, the proper authorities to tell them what happened. But imagine That's I had to cross the street and then I'm glad that nobody else got hurt, right? That nobody else was out yeah. there. My apartment complex, my daughter was walking, 
you know, walking. Yeah. I was walking. It's like Scary. crap like that, like you said, you know, you were all these, uh, this crap just, just tries to come at us because mm -hmm. they know, they know who we are. They know what we're going to do. The powers that be will say the bad Germans, the bad NAZ eyes, right? They're upset that we <laughs> woke from the F up and they can't stop us anymore because we're unbreakable and we're here for such a time as this, right, Lindsay? Yeah, I, no, absolutely. I mean, I, I think even even like talking to you like right now and stuff like I, I've been, you know, pretty hesitant to really say anything about myself or be out there. I guess I'm sort of like, just because of the fact that you're like, you, like last summer, I started having my actual memories, like aside from all the craziness and size of the fact that they were stopping me at every airport where people actually started thinking I was a drug dealer. Cause I'd be like, okay, like I was with people sometimes and like, well, if they stop me, just let you know. And then they would happen to look at me like, oh, are you, are you in trouble with it? Like, no, I, I had no criminal, like I haven't done anything, but, but it's hard to explain. Cause I, even I didn't know. But then, right. yeah, I had a lot of people later on, like years later, they'd be like, yeah, did you, uh, I think you were in the space program. And I'm like, no, like, you know, like, I don't think so, right? Like, I like to watch the videos and listen to people like Max Spears and stuff. But I thought, you know, I thought, no, I couldn't have been involved with that stuff. And um, yeah. Like, what, what kind of, um, sorry. What kind of memories um, are you getting back that, that you're thinking now? It's like, well, yeah, I'm part of this kind of, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess like I, I knew intuitively that I was definitely part of it for a few years now, but the actual memories, like I had no memories. And if I try to think about it, um, you know, besides the regular like weird things that would happen. Uh, but yeah, every time I try to think about it, it was like there was like, um, it, like a square a white square in the middle of my head that's all I could see and um you know and I one day I, I guess it was um I think it was Misha Johnson she had a thing with like you know a bunch of this the this, this super soldiers and all this so I thought okay I'll just join in the group and listen along and you know um and they all could remember stuff but I didn't um but then like um uh, you know there was a guy that kind of um he he heard, he goes, oh, you know, that thing. He goes, I know what that is. He goes, I had the same thing. You know, he was, a, he was in Montauk. I actually realized that I knew him from Montauk later, <laughs> but I didn't even realize he was in Montauk. And this is the, actually the kind of funny part because, um, well, I'll get to that in a second, but he, he, he just said, yeah, that, that, that thing is an implant. He goes, I had the same thing and I managed to remove mine. Do you want me to see if I can, you know, help you with that a little bit? And so we worked on that. And then all of a sudden, you know, I started getting like kind of, you know, like ideas and in and memories, you know, and then um, about I guess things that I had, you know, like just been the places that I'd been, and um, and then I did like a little bit of regression and stuff um, after as well at the same time, and then all of a sudden one day, well, th th this is the weird part because I didn't look into his background. I just, you know, I was just talking to him and stuff. And all of a sudden one day I'm like, wait a minute. Um, one of the times when I used to, I got stopped with my mom, we went to Atlanta for like a uh, retreat or whatever. And I got, I got taken in the airport there and they go, do you know why you're here? And I'm like, oh, no, I don't. You know, like as usual, right? And they're like, well, cause you lied about your address. And I'm like, I didn't lie about my address. You know, I live in Canada. This is my address. And they're like, yeah, but you live somewhere else too. And I'm like, no, they're like, they showed me the address they're like you live in new york city and i'm like i don't live in new york like they're like you were just there not that long ago you yeah they're like you're going back and forth and um well you know what i'm i'm not sure because like i have i have memories of new york now you know um and i had been there a bunch of times but um yeah like it was it was strange because while i was having these memories come back about the programs i had no for some reason, I, I never considered Montauk at all. And I guess that was because I was programmed to not ever consider it. So I literally like, it was like I was blind as a bat. I could not see like nothing's in New York. There's nothing there. Don't, you know what I mean? Like there's no reason <laughs> for for any of this. And all of a sudden, and all of a sudden I just had this, I woke up one morning and I'm like, oh my God, that they said I moved in New York. And then all of a sudden I was like, and then I knew I was a time traveler because I, I remembered um, a bunch of 
time things that I was doing with time. So I already had those memories. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, you know, I never considered that as one of the programs. Like cost and program. Like, oh my God. I'm like, and I wrote him, I'm like, I think I was in Montauk. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. And he's just like, yeah. <laughs> That's all he said. He goes, I was just waiting for you. He goes, I didn't want to, you know, tell you anything. I just wanted to wait till you were like, you know, slowly remembering this stuff. But yeah, it was, it was completely like everything, it was completely blanked out. And, and um, it's, it's kind of, and I had a hat. I used to wear a New York Yankees hat all the time. And um, I learned that the, the symbol and everything that I had been started wearing since I was probably 10, um, like different hats, but they always had New York Yankees. Well, that was meant to, after I did something, I'd wear the hat. When I saw the hat, I'd be like, okay, you can go back to sleep now. It was a programming, right? So, I, I didn't, you know, I mean, I never knew why that I always had to have, I mean, I lived in, in Boston before, and as you probably know, the Boston Red Sox and New York Yankees, they, you know, big rivals, right? Yeah. And Americans are crazy <laughs> for baseball. Yeah. And, and I'm in Boston and people are throwing stuff at me yelling, Yankees suck, you know, and I'm like still wearing the hat and I'm thinking, oh, and look, I can't take this thing off. Like, you know, <laughs> like, Anybody with common sense would be like, I don't even like the Yankees. Why am I wearing their hat? And I'm getting harassed by these people and I don't even care about baseball. And like, that's funny because my thing is Ali Dodgers. And my oh, really? favorite player was uh, Fernando Valenzuela. And oh, my yeah? whole family is programmed with the Ali Dodgers. And it's funny oh, really? that you mentioned the hats because I wear baseball caps. I wear my, one of my favorite one is both, right? Yeah. Um, I when okay it's like I don't know if it's a program or an altar but I'll wear that hat or whatever hat that I want to wear when I'm like I'm gonna go in there and slay like this is business like I don't like okay so I make myself kind of invisible but I don't mean to it's when I wear my hats mm -hmm. that's my security blanket I don't know why mm -hmm. um I mean other than wearing the 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 beanie hat at night or during the day I have to wear this this beanie hat to to cover my ears, a pineal gland, to be able to sleep some, you know, without getting the, the interference, the Wi-Fi crap messages from CIA. But mm -hmm. that that actually makes sense what you said, as far as the hats, and it's very triggering to me. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I yeah, saw you wearing. Yeah, and then you know it's so cool that that your friend, your super soldier brother, didn't tell you until you remembered because I had that happen with me my first time that I ever came out was saying that I was running with files. I had a business suit on black and white and heels and running down the hallway. And there was so many um, kids my age, you know, in the dorm, there was like a dorm thing. And then when, when I said it publicly uh, in 2018, I finally started talking. Susan Long, she's SSP. She said, I remember you from the programs. And she made a video just to acknowledge me on YouTube and um, on public in public, and I it just it, it felt good um, because we're not crazy. Also, you mentioned Misha Johnson. I'm hopefully going to go on Thursday. Uh, she she told me please come on whenever you can. But she, oh. she I'm very grateful to her as well because oh. um, I I had premonitions and memories coming that I was in all the programs and I have all the abilities and. I thought, yeah, right, like this is nuts. And so I contacted her for a reading. Well, well I didn't even know she was gonna do a reading. Um, I, I went into the, the group thingies. Mm -hmm. Kind of like what I did sort of. Yeah, yeah, and she did a reading for me, like 12 cards, you know, and she's like, yes, oh, this, cool. yes, that, yes, that, yes, that. So I'm like, oh my God, I wasn't going nuts. So I'm glad <laughs> you remembered you and, yeah. um, and they will keep, you know, remembering you um, more, you're gonna help awaken other super soldiers because that's what we do we are we activate others you know mm -hmm. our, our dna is tied pretty much as one you know because we're here to 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 uh, finish what we what we started and they will say they try to stop us so yeah it, that's it this is this is this time we're here for this time <laughs> yeah for sure yeah and i remember like you you actually were doing a show and i'm trying to think what did you say you said something but it was really interesting because it happened at the same time um i was revoking contracts with like you know i was kind of mad i was i was you know i was just 
in one of those moods that day and I'm like you know what I didn't want to do any of this as a kid you know I didn't even get paid anything right. I want I want all the money back <laughs> you know like and you know, I started doing like <laughs> oh yeah no I was just gonna do like the revocations like you had been talking I was I was like you know like I all the contracts and agreements that I have with them I'm like I don't want those and it was interesting because I actually could hear it was really faint it was obviously some type of um b2k or whatnot but it was very faint and it said well you know you can't do that because if you do you know if you revoke all of your agreements with us you know we're protecting you like who's going to protect you like we've been and i'm like oh is that what you call this you know all the <laughs> shit i've gone through my whole life and like and you were protecting me like no oh wow, you know but it, it's those threats right it's, it's always the threats of you know i mean it, that was kind of like <clears throat> the mafia sorry oh yeah. yeah yeah i think it was it could have been those two <laughs> There we go. Let her speak now, right? <laughs> I know. I'm like, great. <laughs> Get off our channel, AI. Yeah, AI. exactly. No. I'm talking. <laughs> I'm talking. Sorry, yeah. go <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 no. I'm listening. No, I think it could have been like either. I posted two things. One was the Mile 22. It's a CIA movie. Okay. Yeah. Of how they hack. Uh, communication, you know, uh, timelines, stuff like that. And then, um, ah, let me have my channel back. Okay. The CIA, these programs, okay, they don't give a F about us, but they can't really let us die. Yeah. Because they already tried. Okay. So the, the powers that be along with, Yeah. So it's like they already, in other words, we're, we're unbreakable. Like, we already proved it to ourselves and to others through our DNA, through our activation, through recovering our memories, um, through breaking off the Omega programming, you know, kill yourself, blah, 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 bull crap that goes yeah. on. The yeah, threat, the suicide you know, programs. Right, and, yeah. and Project Suicide, Project Ab Abandonment that I talk about. And now, since you, Lindsay, are talking, speaking now in public, um, you're in the light now. You're not hiding anymore. And it was never your intention to hide. It's just that the CIA and other powers that be want us to hide and 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 think that we're nuts and think and have our families think our friends that we're nuts and we're not. So welcome aboard, yeah. sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of my well, friends, oh well, yeah, sense. Susan, she says, uh, she told me today, we were talking about something. And then she says, buckle up, buttercup. I'm like, in four, rubber ducky. <laughs> oh, <man. I'm> there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's, I mean, it's it's um, it was just yeah, like that. That was the the worst part about the memories that came back last summer was when I, I mean, like obviously still more is coming forward and stuff. Um, you know, for for this type of stuff, like I said, I've always been more connected with the other things, like my spiritual and psychic abilities and stuff but this is like new stuff right this, these memories of these programs because i guess that's what was white right and it's i was so scared when i started remembering stuff i thought oh no they're gonna find out that you know what am i gonna do and i remember thinking you know what i've been i've gone through so much shit i've had so many things anyway i mean like you know what i mean and and, and the whole time you're intimidated and you're thinking you know you're gonna be you, you're going to be scared of these things. Like um, the one guy I was mentioning, his name was Alandra. You might know him. I don't know. Um, but yeah, he said the same thing. You know, he goes, no, you, you have to, you know, like once you come to terms that like you're safe, you know, like it's that, that fear of, you yeah. know, like, okay, I can't remember because, you know, as soon as I remember, they're going to come back from you and, you know, <laughs> wipe me again. Right. And I just said, you know what? I, I do not consent to right that anymore i'm not going to go through with it i'm not part of that you know like um you know like and also the fact of, of regaining your sovereignty from them because there's a lot of stuff they stole from us and, and on a spiritual level um it's still ours so all of the stuff that we you know we have to reclaim our power we have to get our energy back so they actually do owe us a lot and maybe that was the whole point of keeping us asleep as long as they did is because they don't want to pay us back for you know everything that they've done and they've taken because it wasn't theirs to take right um right. you know i don't know i would never want to do that to people it just seems <laughs> you know like 
do your own work, <laughs> right? right? Like, so yeah, like I, I, I think, um, yeah, that, that that's that's the hardest part. Like I, I do know that they 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 can be dangerous, but I think in a lot of ways, often they're dangerous anyway. You know, like are they more dangerous when we're, you know, I guess I guess when you're when you you have to obviously have a certain amount of energy. You don't want to be at your worst, maybe. Um, while you're trying to, you know, get, <laughs> talk about stuff, but like, I, and there is reasons too, sometimes we are undercover, like, I mean, I probably, you're not going to be like you guys in the sense, like, yeah, maybe, I don't know, maybe it'll change soon, but like where I'm totally out there and, you know, but, um, but I do know that there was a time where I, I was meant to be a little bit hidden because it, it's helped, it's helped me in a way because, I'm kind of like that weapon that comes out last minute, you know, once I'm, <laughs> once I'm, you know, cause I had to build myself back, you know, put yourself back together again too. Right. Um, and, and when you're not, when no one's looking at you and no one even knows you exist, it's a little easier to, to put yourself back together again, get a little less interference. But so there, I guess there's, there's a little bit of, <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah, I know what you mean that like it's, it's, um, like you said you go into the light and then you become a stronger force right because now you're you're speaking your truth right you're not dumbing everything down for everybody else right oh um, thank you for saying that Lindsay. because yeah. i was watching i couldn't watch it anymore it was a, uh, and it had nothing to do with james ring no offense james ring he had on a, a, a female i'm not going to mention her name but she kept saying well, I don't know if I should say this because they're going to get mad. It's like, oh, bitch, get you. Oh, sorry. Oh, girl, excuse my language. Oh, can we do that? <laughs> yeah, right? Like, I should do like attitude, right? They'll do some attitude. <laughs> it's like, oh, crap. You know, if you're not going to, if you're not going to say it, then why are you even on? Like, I don't know. I just, maybe I'm being mean, but it's, it's like, mean what you say and say what you mean. You know, be, yeah. don't be scared. I mean. Yeah, you gotta be as authentic as possible. I guess yeah. there's some things probably, right, that people will have to keep a little under wraps just for the sake of um, camouflage, right? But yeah, for the most part, you still have to be like, yeah, authentic. You can't be, I don't know. Um, I mean, in, in every world, like we, we get criticism and, you know, I think that's the hardest part of all, all this stuff too, is because even in my own sports world, if I, you know, step over there and I've got a lot of norm, norm, normies, like a lot, yeah. a lot of normies, right? And a lot of the normies, they listen to me and stuff and like, whatever. But, you know, it's hard enough over there with like normal people, you know what I mean? And now you've got to like, and you do have to dumb down things all the time just so that everybody can understand, if that makes yeah. sense, right? Like, so, so with that, it's, yeah, like, I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to talk to some of those people about this stuff because I mean, when I just talk about the, the fact that, you know, the whole thing that's gone on was a bit of a scam and a bioweapon and all that, they're like, oh my God, like, oh, they're like, they need to go get a pill. <laughs> you know what I mean? They need to ice their, their head a little while, right? Like it's right. like too much, right? It's nothing. And I'm like, oh, wow. Imagine if I said what I wanted to say, <laughs> right? So but um but yeah you I mean it I guess it's like that in every every little group or niche right you got the like I guess you got the super soldier and the um I don't know what's the well other? they have a uh, super soldier leaks the data and the, the the um white and what is that love and light community you yeah know? love and light yeah and there's like the, the tr truther movement the truther movement uh, and like, um, yeah, like you've got normie areas, like I said, the sports, sometimes you can, you get a mix actually. And then you've got spiritual healing, right? Like you've got people who do like Reiki and energy healing. You've got, I don't know, all that stuff mixed in. Um, but yeah, there's yeah, a lot of one, different one, uh, levels of understanding. Yes, you're right. And, and one of them, and again, I'm going to talk about it again, it's when... <sighs> They would say, you know, oh, the, the love in my community would say, oh, if you hear a ringing in your ear, it's because 
the ships are here, you know, they're, they're getting a download. And I'm like, nah, like later on, I was like, nah, girl, they're, it's actually the CIA. They are scanning you to, to see what you're thinking, to see if you're still in the same location as you fell asleep in the morning. Like at night, I'll get some like around 11, 44 or something at night. And then like maybe 3 30, 4 in the morning or five, right? And then again, like at 10. So they're they're always scanning me. And my mom used to make this joke in Spanish when we were little. She's like, ¿Quién está hablando mal de mí? Mi de, mi oído derecho o izquierdo? It's like, who's making fun of me? You know, my ear, guess which ear is ringing because if you guess right or whatever, it's either this person talking good or this person talking bad. So, you know, it, it kind of was a joke until I finally, you know, I wanted to believe that it was like the greatest thing. Yeah, I just... <laughs> you know, but, but then I'm like, no, I'm not going to go to no ship. I'm not going to be believing in that savior mentality that they're here to save us and crap. No, you know, or, or the DT thing that everybody's like, oh, he's going to save us. You know, no, you got to save yourself. Um, so it's, it's been a wild ride and it's, it, it's only the beginning, you know? Yeah. But what do you think about sure. all the, um, the med beds, what do you think about um, future technologies like of being able to uh, pretty much Xerox our food and make it appear, um, things like that. What what have you found about that? Um, well, I think with the med beds, I mean, we've had, like, we've had stuff for like healing and like sarcophaguses and all that stuff, I think for a long time. But yeah. it's it's just so suppressed, right? Like it's, it's like with everything. I mean, um, it's only for, for those that they want, you know, like the kind of funny things that, and you know, they, they kind of limit our healing and then they like <laughs> ban the rest of everybody from, from using it. Um, so they have I don't that know money. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know how long it would take, you know, to bring that out because like we've had so many, like I, I've definitely looked into a lot of healing technologies and stuff. And um, we've had so many different types of things that, you know, are amazing, like frequency healing and like electromagnetic healing and all this. And then like, I mean, for the longest time, if, if you were one of the people who created stuff and you kind of went out there and you were like, Hey, look at my invention. And all of a sudden that person just disappeared. Right. <laughs> so um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I think, I think we kind of have to eliminate the system that we're, we're under right now. Like this whole control system has kind of got to be abolished. I think before like regular people, um, get to see like med beds. Um, right now, one thing, I don't know if you agree, but I, I strongly, strongly believe that our technology, our best technology ever is inside us like that we are the merkaba we you know we are the chakras um they they invented the chakras as an outlay back in the moria and stuff like that for our bodies to control us okay um they could send messages through your sacral area oh you gotta have sex with this person or yeah. hey um just little things like that. But what I'm saying is if people would just understand that our healing is inside us, we, we have a toroid, toroid, I have a hard time with that word. word. Tor toroidal? Toroidal, right. Like a uh, light, yeah. yeah, magnetic field around us that comes from inside. Yeah. yeah. Basically what I see it for me, it comes from my heart. And when I send healing or when I use my superpowers as, you know, especially if, if I'm in the astral or I'm being taken or whatever, I can shoot light from my hands and healing from my hands, but it actually comes from my heart. Now, there's other instances where I put my, my mind, my pineal gland, my thoughts, my words, my heart, my sacral area, right? And you can do that kind of a power healing or or um defense mechanism or what, whatever if you're in war or whatever um i just i just wish people would understand that because i was able to change my dna activate my dna just by talking <clears throat> to myself my blood my bloodline by telling my junk quote unquote dna that you are not done mm -hmm. 
you know? And by healing myself and exercising and, and, and just eating right, you'd be surprised just by the way you think what you're going to manifest. Yeah. And imagine, imagine if you believe that. And imagine if you take that one step further and start manifesting that through your heart, your throat, your vision, right? Yeah. Your, your imagination, imaginar, like in Spanish, because that's where it really starts. Oh, absolutely. No, I, I actually totally agree with all of that. Um, you know, um, I was doing some work, um, like when I was, uh, I guess, originally getting really targeted. Um, mm -hmm. You may have seen them. I think Kenny did a show with them. Um, I was doing some work with Sean Bond. Oh, with Sean Bond? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Kenny Bradley told me to actually contact him, which I did about a month ago, but I haven't heard back because she told me he's a time traveler and he might have some information for you since you're a time traveler. And I'm still mm -hmm. waiting for his response. Uh, but what is it that you found with, uh, were you oh. able to contact Sean? Or? Yeah, you know what, I, I did a lot of work with him originally, he was helping me like, um, he, he's really good at what he does. Um, again, you know, I think obviously I had connections with him in the past um, already, you know, um, but yeah, like he, he, um, he helped me get through that time phase where like, I was just really like, I had dark magicians attacking me and just craziness. And he was actually helped me uh, to teach me how to shift off of that. And I, you know what I mean? It was for the first, it was such, such a change because it was, you know, so he, he really helped. And then we were doing kind of like, he was a sponsor for me for a bit when I was doing fighting and um, to get back, you know, back into fighting. And obviously I didn't get to do, I had a bunch of fights getting ready for neck last year when, you know what I mean? I got stuck in Nepal. I got all, you know, I was in Thailand. It was just crazy because of all this, you know, Corona BS. Um, so it, all my plans, right? Like all my plans fell out the window. But yeah, he he um, done a lot of uh, really good work um, with like psionics and stuff. And so like, and and he's talked about that quite a lot. And um, you know, I, and I totally agree with him because actually when I was a kid, that was some of my beef I was saying with some of those programs that are connected with the U.S. Navy and all that because I basically said as a kid, I'm like, you know, all of this. You guys would have the technology I have, like biologically, because I spent thousands, like you know, thousands of years working on myself to develop the abilities. Where they just wanted to take it, you know how they are. They just, oh, yeah. we're gonna use this now. But I said that's the reason why you guys don't have this because you're, you know, what I mean, you you don't understand like how this works, right? Our energy, our our own abilities within us, or you know, our psionic abilities, like you said, like. They're huge. I mean, that is the greatest technology um, there actually is. You know, it's much more advanced than anything you're going to build. You know, in our regular everyday three D three D world, right? Um, right? But yeah, but he does talk about you know like a lot of the DNA technology and stuff like that. And um, so yeah, like if you're gonna, uh, yeah, you I definitely recommend him. You know, um, you know like. Uh, and he's a great guy too. So, but I'm, I'm guessing he's really, really busy right now because, you know, things have gotten crazy with, <laughs> with the world. So I'm finding like a lot of people, right. They get just, just busy with, you know, that, that's my, you know, sometimes I say stuff and then he, you know, he'll get back to me eventually, but he gets, yeah, he's you know, pretty busy. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I don't know if I'm reading your mind or what, but I, you're, you're very much at peace. And what I feel is, cause I was, you know, I was worried. It's like, how are we going to find this place to live? What are we going to do? And, and in one of the timelines, my divine counterpart says, well, um, we end up living in a hotel for a month until we find a place. And I'm like, wow. Um, I was getting a little bit frustrated today for like maybe 10 minutes. And then I calm myself down. You know, and I said, just be peaceful. Just take it easy. Um, you're already there. You know, it's going to happen. It's going to be okay. Like with you, with the fights and stuff like that, that you did not get to fight. I'm sorry that you didn't. Um, but in a way, like there was change in your life. And you're yeah. here now in front of the camera. <laughs> Perhaps yeah. it, it aided, it helped for you to come forth with, with your love and your peace. I, I see that in you and I'm 
very proud to be your sister and your friend. And we'll do, we'll be doing more of these. And um, I guess we can end it there, Lindsay. And I'm just really appreciative of your, of your love, your peace for your, how do you say your passion as well to get the, uh, the issues or, or the information out, you know? So my hat's off to you, my sister. And so can you tell everyone how they can get a hold of you? If you're on Facebook, if you have an email, like I know yeah. people are going to want to interview you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I never thought about it. I, yeah, I've been, like I said, the last time I did a show, I was actually with Sean and a few people, but yeah, he, he, he knew, He's like, okay, you can go on anonymously, so, <laughs> right? But he, he could, like, I guess he read my mind at the time. Um, but yeah, no, um, you, you, if you want to right now, um, I have an email, you know, um, alienplanet13 at yahoo.com. Um, you know, I had that since I was, like, I think 12. It was like my first email <laughs> you know and so it still cool. makes sense right alien planet yeah just pretty pretty accurate <laughs> um uh -huh. yeah i mean i do have um a youtube channel i i've just been putting like random stuff for the same thing i've had it since i was like young so i've just kind of put random stuff uh fight stuff you know just like um so yes i enjoy nothing. Your, your fight stuff what what is the name of the of the youtube channel um, it's I am God 144. So awesome. <laughs> yeah, so but yeah, nothing like crazy is going on there. But yeah, like if people want to, you know, check out, I think there's some fights and stuff and just yeah, random things. I'm trying to think of like what to do, um, you know, with it, if I want to like make another channel or if I want to like, you know, but I, I know I probably should. I've, I've had people like, why don't you put more videos up? And you know, but I've just been, I guess, hiding you know, laying low for a long time, you know, so I've been like kind of in inconspicuous, you know, like, <laughs> but can't, can't lay like super low forever, right, so, yeah, but yeah, so, yeah, that's, um, I don't know if there's anything else, <laughs> and are you on Facebook, Instagram, um, yeah, I'm on Instagram, um, it's Lindsay, uh, Lindsay under, actually, check. It's Lindsay Muay Thai, Oh, my phone turned off. But yeah, Facebook, um, Lindsay Fireball. And um, yeah, Lindsay Fireball. And I think by Lindsay, I'm going to say Lindsay Muay Thai, but I think there's an underscore. I think it's Lindsay underscore Muay Thai um, for my Instagram. Um, I don't know. I think you added me to it. Yeah. Let me pull it up. Here it is. Okay, my phone turned off. You know why? Because it kept clicking into my earphones and like, cutting out what you're saying that's why I was trying to fix this go on Facebook yeah yeah the Lindsay underscore Muay Thai sounds great thank you so much yeah, Lindsay so, and thank you for yeah, your time for sure. yeah thanks a lot Veronica it was nice chatting yeah. with you you too and whenever <laughs> you want to go on let me know you know um usually the shows are on Tuesday but we can do any other day as well you know. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. No, I, I hope I didn't ramble too much because oh, no. <laughs> I'm not good at these shows. <laughs> yeah. I know. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you so much. And no I'll worries. talk to you soon. And okay. bye, everyone. <laughs> All right. Thank take you. care. You too. Bye. Bye. Adios. Adios.